With this starter kit, you can create your own custom Revit toolbar in less than two minutes. And it comes with all necessary resources, links to documentations, ebooks, tons of code samples, and even examples of creating VPF forms and more. There is so much included and I also decided to make it 100% free. So I recommend you to grab it before I change my mind. And in this video, I'll take you through everything inside this kit so you can get the most out of it. But first of all, let me prove to you how quick and easy it is to create your custom extension. Let's set the timer to two minutes and build a new extension together. And then I'll dive in all the details of what's inside and how to get the most out of it. If you are ready to create your own Parravit extension, comment down below the name that you will use for your custom Revit extension. All right, and now let's start the timer. I'm gonna create your custom Parravit extension. But to do that, we need to download Parravit starter kit. Let's go to learnrevitapi.com slash pyravitstarterkit. In here, fill out this form with your email and you will receive an email with the download link. And once you're gonna download it, it's gonna look like this. And you'll see there is extension, And this is the folder structure for your Pyravit extension where everything is included. Now, we need to do two things. First of all, copy that and we need to place it somewhere safe on our machine where it won't be deleted accidentally. I'm gonna go to update it like this. And then in here, I already prepared my Revit extension. And I'm gonna paste this folder structure right here. And now we need to rename two folders. Cause you see, PyRevit sees this folder structure and it understands what is what by using these suffixes. You will see that there is that extension, that tab, that panel, that push button. There are also many other ones, but these are the most common ones and this is the bare minimum we need. In here, we need to rename everything before that extension. Choose whatever name you want for your extension. You can write here your extension name, but that extension should stay exactly like it is. Now, once you're gonna do that, go inside this folder and also rename the tab folder. Select everything before that tab and put the name here. And then you will be able to see your extension with your custom name. In my case, I'm gonna go back because I prefer to see it as EF by Revit Starter Kit because that's how I wanna name it. All right, now we've done everything we needed with this folder structure. Now we need to copy the path and we need to go to Revit. In here, go to PyRevit tab. Then in here on the pull-down menu, click on settings. And we need to provide the path to PyRevit so it knows from where to load this extension. I'm gonna click right here on add folder and then paste the path right here. And make sure that you do not select that extension itself. Because if you can see right here that extension, then you did it wrong. You have to remove selected, add the folder, and provide the folder without this dot extension. Now I did it correctly. And then lastly, click on save and reload. And after you wait a little, you'll see a new extension pop up right here. In my case, it's EF by Revit Starter Kit, but in your case, it's gonna be named whatever you named that tab folder, all right? And inside you can see you get a lot of different things. First of all, let's click on this about button and you will see a message. Congratulations, you've just created your own extension with EF Pyravit Starter Kit. You are a Pyravit developer now. And there are lots of lots of different resources which I'm gonna take you through in this lesson. But I have a little ask to do. I made all of this for free and I hope that you're gonna like it and you're gonna get lots of value. And all I ask in return is if you could leave a testimonial about the Starter Kit. It can be text or it can be video. And if you do a video testimonial, you'll also get a reward for that. But now let's have a look inside and see what do we get. We get lots of resources right here, like documentation, resources, code samples, and I'm gonna cover all of it in a moment. But I wanna start with this one, because this is the folder structure that I provided that you can follow. In here, you can see you have your push button, your URL button. We have lots of buttons right here. We have our pull down menus where we can place lots of buttons. And we can also have stacks. And in here, you can click on anything and you'll see this message. Button four was clicked. And there is also a description. You can hold Alt and click on any of this button to open the source code of this button. You can duplicate or use this placeholder for your own script. So, because PyRevit is open source, we can access all the code behind it. So I'm gonna go to Revit, hold Alt, and click on button one, for example. It's gonna open the folder and I see it's Python script and icon file for this button. I can go out and you'll notice that I'm in the dev panel and there are like dev bun button one, two, three, and four. And in here you can also see, here's the dev panel and there is button one, two, three, and four. Then if I'm gonna continue going out, I'm gonna be in EF Pyravit Starter Kit and there is gonna be about panel, dev panel, placeholder panel, resources panel, 
And same here, about panel, resource panel, dev panel, and so on. And you can easily have a look at the folder structure and then what you see in Revit. And I'm sure you will connect these dots and be able to rename it, make new panels, create new buttons, and it's not that complicated. All you have to do is make sure that you do not misspell these endings. This is the most important part. All you have to do is come back to this folder structure and you just need to either delete something here or maybe you're gonna go to placeholder panel and I'm gonna duplicate this push button example. I'm gonna remove that. I'm gonna write here push button example two and let's click on enter. Inside, we're gonna go to the script and I'm gonna rename it right here, push button two. This is my usual PyRevit script template. In here, you will see the description which you can modify to whatever you want and the name of the button. On the bottom, you have your most common import variables and normally you would automate your boring work right here. But also on the bottom, you'll notice to delete below. In here, you see that I bring a custom function called kit button clicked, which is located in the library snippets custom print. This is how we can reuse code across all our buttons in our PyRevit extensions. I just wrote here from snippets, custom print, import this. And if I'm gonna go to folder structure, let's go out, out to that extension. And here's the library folder. You'll see that in here, you will need to drop init files everywhere. And then you write from snippets, which is this folder, custom print, which is this file. I import this function, which does this one with the output. And that's how you reuse your code. Now let's close that real quick. And we're gonna go back. Now, with this out of the way, we can finally focus on resources because there's so much about resources I want to show you. Let's start with the basics. There is documentation. We'll have links to PyRevit developer documentation, PyRevit Labs documentation, Revit API documentation, then Revit developer's guide. And this one is actually a really nice guide. In here, you can find a lot of information, but it's going to be focused on C-sharp. But still, you can get a lot of information out of this guide. Then resources. In here, you will see, I added here all the forums, where to get the icons. Then on the top, you'll notice Autodesk University Revit API. And this will open you Autodesk University website with Revit API filters. And you can see, I found 199 different examples. In here, you can scroll through and see, maybe you'll find a presentation that's actually gonna help you in your Revit API journey. Now, let's go back to resources. What else is here? Then there's gonna be free lessons. And as you can see from the EF icon, it's gonna take you to my website. In here, you will be able to access module one from my course, which is free for everybody. And it's meant to help you configure your Revit API development environment and create your own custom PyRevit extension. If you scroll down, you'll see here's the first module. And if you keep scrolling, you'll see all the other modules that come inside the course. And if you wanna access all these modules, you'll have to join the course. And now let's go back to resources. Then in here, you also will be able to get the Revit API SDK. And there is also a link to get your Revit API stops to create your autocomplete. In here, you can see there's a video on how to actually create it yourself. And then on the bottom, you'll see download Revit API stops. Now, the next is about templates. You can just click on them. For example, if I click on template Dynamo, it's gonna open the file which represents the script that you would use in Python nodes in Dynamo. If I'm gonna click here on PyRevit, this is gonna be the big template explaining all the extra bells and whistles. Here you can see I have author, help URL, minimum Revit version, and all, all, all of that. If you're interested in that, I actually have a specific video where I break it down. But usually I use the code from this PyRevit template min. This is the minimum version that you need. You need a few variables, you need a few imports, and that's enough to create your button. Now. Then in here, you'll find links to the ebooks. You can get my ebook Beginner's Guide to Revit API or Filtered Element Collector Guide, Master Getting Your Elements. And now we're moving probably to the most important part of this lesson, the code samples. There is a lot of them. We're gonna start with the most basic ones, GitHub. I just want you to know that you can go to the GitHub, write PyRevit in the search, and you will find 237 results. It means that there are so many PyRevit extensions that you can look at, and you can get different kind of code snippets out of there and use it in your own extensions. You can also do the same by using GitHub for Revit API, but in here you will also find a lot of C-sharp code snippets. Because if I'm gonna change to Python right here, you can see I only get 44 results. But still, these are extra code results for your Pyrate scripts, which is great. Then this one is gonna take you to my website where I just drop a lot of different Pyrate scripts. In here, you're gonna find a lot of code snippets and you can just have a look and see what's gonna happen. 
This one you can see, gonna turn the scope boxes into the sections. In here you can see how to add shared parameters, how to change room level, how to create a beam, how to create detail line, field regions, how to create views, how to find key parameters items and so on, so on, so on, so on. There are lots of code snippets you can find here as well. But most importantly, I've included lots and lots of code snippets inside of this PyRavid starter kit. In here you can see code samples for create elements, filtered element collector, parameters, selections and so on. Let's click on selection with the left click and it's gonna open a file from the library. In here you can see, here are the selection samples and this is the best part. Here's how to get selected elements, here's how to pick elements by rectangle, here's how to pick object, how to pick multiple objects, how to pick point, pick object and so on, so on, so on. Now let's say I wanna know something about parameters. In here you'll see lots of samples about parameters. How to pick an object to work with parameters, how to get instance parameters, how to get type parameters, how to get values, how to just iterate and lots of different things. Here's how to get built-in parameters, shared parameters and so on. And trust me, you'll get so much value by just going through these code examples. Here you'll see how to create different views, floor plans, 3D, sections, drafting, legend, sections, elevations, how to override graphics in your views, how to rename your views, how to create view filters, and so on. I really included so many code snippets and so much that it's crazy. And then on the bottom you'll also notice there's VPF form sample. For this one, when you click on it, it will actually open this form, which you can see right here. This is my EF VPF sample form, and in here you can provide a few test examples, test 1, test 2, let's click on this checkbox, let's select this combo box, and then in here I'm gonna look for maybe some stacked walls, let's take the footing, I'm gonna click submit. And it's gonna print everything that you've just selected. And it means that you can hold alt and click on this button and have a look inside how does it work. And you will see that in the folder there's gonna be formui.xaml file, which is the front end of your application, how it looks and then the script file of how it actually works. In there, you'll notice that I have to use the classes because I have to inherit from the window class to create my kind of form. And then there are a few methods to actually create this kind of filtering, define all the properties and so on. This is quite advanced topic, but I'm sure this example is gonna help to those who really wanna go into VPF. And then I also included here EF Revit API tutorials. If you're gonna click on it, it's gonna open up the menu where you can scroll through and see various tutorials which I think are gonna help you in your Revit API journey. Just have a look here, find what you find interesting and click here on watch. For example, Revit API documentation for beginners. This is important step in your Revit API journey. All right guys, and lastly, in here in Learn Revit API panel, you can see you can find my blog where I write lots of different articles you can find these free lessons, which I already mentioned in resources. And you can also read all the previous newsletters I wrote about Revit API. And that's pretty much it about PyRavit Starter Kit. Again, I hope that you're gonna enjoy this. I hope it's gonna help you create lots of lots of cool tools. And all I ask in return is that you're gonna leave a review. Just click on this button right here. And please just let me know what you think about this PyRavit Starter Kit. In here, you have an option to record a video or write a testimonial. And for those brave of you who decide to write a video testimonial, you're gonna get a really nice reward by the end. I highly recommend you to do that. All right, guys, I hope that you liked EF Pyrevit Starter Kit and you enjoyed all the resources, code samples, and everything included inside of it. But if you really wanna learn Revit API in the fastest and most efficient way possible, you should check my learnrateapi.com website. In there, you can gain the access to my course, where you will get access to 15 hours of video content across 50 different lessons. Each lesson not only has a video, but also it has written post with all the code snippets and explanation in the written form, which you can also translate to any other language of your choice. And on top of that, you also get access to Learn Revit API community. This is where we can ask questions, ask for help, share our code, or just in general, talk about Revit API and PyRevit, because that's why we are there in the first place. I hope to see you there one day, and if not, please enjoy my EF PyRevit starter kit, and let others know as well. Let's create even more extensions for Revit and share our tools. This is really gonna help us push the AC industry forward. My name is Eric Fritz and I wish you happy coding. I hope to see you in the next videos as well. Goodbye.